Ohio issue one. What is it? I am Ryan Bombiger. I'm the chief creative officer of the Radiance Foundation. Let's just break down this whole ballot initiative called Issue One. It's happening in Ohio. This is a very crucial initiative that's trying to enshrine abortion, among other things, as a constitutional, constitutional right in the state of Ohio. So let's just break it down. Let's read it. It's actually called the Right to Reproductive Freedom with Protections for Health and Safety. It actually erases every single protection for health and safety. Let's start there. Then it goes on to say, every individual has a right to make and carry out one's own reproductive decisions, including but not limited to. Every individual, well, just like the pro-abortion radical left, they're erasing women. So they don't say women, and there's a reason for this, because they're saying every individual. That means even a minor child. So every individual has the right, and they go on to say, to make and carry out one's own reproductive decisions, including but not limited to decisions on, and they go to list things that there are already pretty much no restrictions on. Contraception, fertility treatment, continuing one's own pregnancy. No one says you can't continue your own pregnancy. Miscarriage care. No one says that you can't get treatment for miscarriage care. This is what the pro-abortion side keeps saying. They keep saying, if you have an ectopic pregnancy, you can't get treated. It's a total lie. In every state where there are abortion bans, of course you can get treatment for ectopic pregnancy. That's not the same as these elective abortions. Ectopic preg pregnancy actually puts a, women's, a woman's physical health, physical life in danger. And so there's there are no restrictions on that. So they're already talking about things that there pretty much are no, no restrictions on. I mean, contraception, there may be some age appropriate restrictions, but there's no restriction on the rest of that. And then, of course, the last one it says, and remember it says not limited to, abortion. That's what they really want. But what they're saying is that these, it says including but not limited to, because what they're talking about when they talk about reproductive care, they're also talking about transgender surgeries for every individual, that you can't have a say in that because it's unlimited. Then it goes on to say, the state shall not directly or indirectly burden, penalize, prohibit, interfere with, or discriminate against either. So basically the state can't do anything, but it's saying the state can't do anything about an individual's voluntary exercise of this right or a person or entity that assists an individual exercising this right, you know, a boyfriend who's pressuring or the abortionist who's carrying this out, unless the state demonstrates that it is using the least restrictive means necessary, <laughs> the least restrictive means to advance the individual's health in accordance with widely accepted and evidence-based standards of care. Okay, so basically they're saying, hey state, you can't do anything, but if there are gonna be any kind of restrictions, it's only to advance that individual who's having the abortion, only to advance their health, but in the least restrictive means necessary. So what this basically does is any of the current regulations, for instance, on abortion mills, these are wiped out because these are not the least restrictive means necessary. Requiring, for instance, an abortion facility to have hospital admitted, admitting privileges, which back in the day with American College of, of OBGYNs, ACOG, which is the largest uh, organization representing those who provide reproductive care, and I don't include abortion in that, um, they say they have been saying for years and years. In fact, many of these organizations all signed documents saying that hospital admitting privileges are the standards of care. But somehow when it comes to abortion, oh, that, that's not necessary at all. Why is that? Why is that? Of course, it's all about protecting abortion, not about protecting the woman. So here they go on to say, however, abortion may be prohibited after fetal viability. But here's the, here's the kicker. But in no case may such an abortion be prohibited if in the professional judgment of the pregnant patient, again, I'm not talking about women because they're erased, in the professional judgment of the pregnant patient's treating physician, a.k.a. abortionist, who profits from the abortion decision. <laughs> this is ridiculous. It is necessary to protect the pregnant patient's life or health. Now, as already covered, in all these states where there are abortion bans, if the woman's physical life is in danger, those are the exceptions in all of these cases where abortion is banned. What they're saying now, listen, the words, patient's life or health. And as with Roe v. Wade and Doe v. Bolton, life and health were defined by economic reasons, emotional reasons, familial reasons. So basically, 
that covers any reason at all. It has nothing to do with the actual physical endangerment of that person's life. So they expand that. And of course, this is up to the <laughs> abortionist who's going to profit from that decision. So he or she is the one who makes that determination, of course. And then it says here, fetal viability means the point in a pregnancy when in the professional judgment of the pregnant patient's treating physician, abortionist, the fetus, the unborn child, has a significant likelihood of survival outside the uterus with reasonable measures. Look, a child who is born can't survive outside the uterus without measures taken, actually extraordinary measures. It's called parenting. You can't just leave an, a newborn child alone. But here they say outside the uterus with reasonable measures. This is determined on a case by case basis. And then section D, it says this section is self executing, which interesting words, because abortion is a form of execution. So here you have it, Ohio issue one, what they want is unlimited abortion. That means through the entire pregnancy up until birth that will eliminate all existing laws on abortion because they're not using the least restrictive means necessary. So for instance, any parental notification or parental consent laws wiped out. The current laws that disallow the destruction of a, a Down syndrome baby in utero, which now is currently against the law in Ohio, wiped out. Every single dismemberment bill wiped out. Uh, partial birth abortion where the child is partially born and then the skull is crushed and the brains are sucked out and the rest of the limbs are severed so they can come out piece by piece. That will also be wiped out because what they don't want is more health and safety for the woman. What they want is unlimited abortion and unaccountable abortionists. So for those who think that this is, oh, this is about empowering an individual for an abortion decision. No, that's not what it's about at all. It's about empowering abortionists and allowing women to be at risk for many reasons. And of course, it allows the unlimited killing of the unborn child for any reason. Ohio issue one is the most radical, radical piece of legislation that Ohio has ever seen. And if people vote yes for issue one, it will become part of their constitution. So I'm telling you, vote no on issue one. Human beings deserve so much better than the violence of abortion. Thank God that we have 3,000 pregnancy centers across the country that care for both mother and child, born and unborn, not just until the child is born, for, but for years after that child is born, helping with emotional support, medical support, uh, material support, which you don't find at these abortion mills. They're not, they don't have baby boutiques and mama boutiques that, that offer millions each year of free items, formula, diaper, cribs, all kinds of furniture, maternity wear, the list goes on and on. They're not supporting mothers but pregnancy centers do. Um, not only mothers, but also fathers. The parenting programs, Earn While You Learn programs, Bright Course programs. This is what empowerment looks like. So I urge you, Ohioans, don't become like California. Vote no on issue one.